we're discussing about the cardiomyopathies, all right? Now, before we go talk about it, you know, we have to actually talk about or define what cardiomyopathies is and also the what are the disorder that comes in the heading of cardiomyopathies, all right? Now, if we write it down here, we can simply make this concept clear. Like, for example, we're talking about cardio, right? And there is something called myopathies, all right? Now, this is something that you should be knowing, that you got to know your definitions very... you got to make your definitions neat, all right? Let's define what is cardiomyopathies is. If you look at this term, right, cardio is referring as your heart, myo is referring as a myocardium, and pathies is referring as pathology. So we are, we are studying the pathology of cardio, or pathology of heart, right? But to be very specific, to the pathology of a heart that involves what's myocardium. So this disorders, right? This cardiomyopathy, whenever, whenever you think about the cardiomyopathies, I want you to think about the, the disorders of the myocardium, okay? But that is not a, let's just say, proper or contemporary definition though, all right? The contemporary or like the modern definitions of the cardiomyopathies is this, that, you know, there is a, like for example, if you're looking at this heart, right, you have, this is called right atrium right here. You have a right ventricle, correct? You have a left ventricle and you have a left atrium. And if you know from your normal anatomy, you know, your heart has a different layers, right? The outermost layer is what is called pericardium, correct? And then after the pericardium, what do you have? You have a something called? There's a pericardium, right? I mean, a pericardium, then you have a, what is this, myocardium, and then you have a endocardium, correct? So there are different layers. Within the pericardium, there are different layers. You have an outer fibrous pericardium, and then you have a serous pericardium, which contains what? Serous per pericardium contains, so let, let me write down here, outer pericardium, and then you have a inner or serous pericardium. The serous pericardium, right, that contains, you have uh, two layers right here, right? You have a parietal, and you have a visceral pericardium, or we also call them a epicardium, okay? So you know this from the general anatomy. So basically, we're studying the disorder that involves the myocardium, right? This is this is the most important thing that you have to know. And that this is like, we can simply say, this is this layer right here, right? This, you can say this is a, this is a myocardium layer right here, which are contractile in nature. Now, now after a little bit about this, Again, coming back here for your definitions, right? When we say this, there is a the cardiomyopathy, the disorders, it means that we have to say that, okay, we're studying the disorders of the myocardium, right? Disorders, let's just say, disorder that involves myocardium or myocardial disorder, myocardium, right? There's some sort of disorder in myocardium that result into, right? That result into, that result into structural all right structural and also the functional functional abnormalities you see all right abnor abnormalities you see all right so there's a myocardia becomes either structurally or functionally abnormalities in the now this is very important in the absence of okay in the absence of now this is the word in the absence of right now, this is a very, very important, okay, for your definitions. In the absence of, right now, in the, in the absence of, what? In the absence of ischemic heart diseases, like for example, you have acute coronary syndromes or disease, that's number one right here, or maybe there is a something called congenital, you know, congenital, congenital uh, heart disease, all right, or three, hypertension, like essential hypertension, or maybe like a val, you know, val vular heart disease, like for example, you know, valvular heart disease, like, you know, myocardial, like myocardial, you know, like those, uh, sorry, valvular heart disease, meaning, you know, the your valve, your, your heart contains different valves, right, like aortic valve, you have, you have a mitral valve. So if there's a abnormalities in those valve, for instance, that result into mitral 
regurgitations or mitral stenosis or aortic regurgitations or aortic stenosis. Those are what? Those are valvular heart diseases. Acute coronary syndromes, like for example, this is what we're talking about MI, right? MI or myocardial infarction or like unstable angina or even like sudden cardiac death, Unsa unstable right? Your angina, right? This disorder, this disorder does not fit or does not fit in the category of the cardiomyopathies. You've got to remember, in order to be, in order to classify diseases that has to be cardiomyopathy, it has to be non-schemic. Non it has to be disorder that is resulting to disorder of myocardium, which results into structural or functional abnormalities in the absence of these disorders, okay? Acute coronary syndromes, congenital heart disease, hypertension, valvular heart diseases, they do not come in the come in the categories or they do not be, they, they are not classified as a cardiomyopathy, okay? You've got to remember this. When you have a congenital heart diseases, those are like, you know, atrial septal defects or ventricle septal defect, tetralogy of fallow, right? These are what? These are congenital heart diseases. So make sure you know your definition really well. Any of these conditions, right? So again, when there's a cardiomyopathy is there, right? Make sure that you eliminate these disorders from the cardiomyopathy, right? Then now we have to think about, now then what are the disorder that comes in the heading or that, that is actually classified as a cardio, as a cardiomyopathy? Now that's what we're going to talk about here. Now, when we talk about it's a disorder that comes in a cardiomyopathy, right? They're usually, you know, based on the, based on the, the WHO and the European doctors, they have actually classified into like basically five subgroups, but you should know three major ones for your national exam, okay? Three major ones are very, very important, but I'll mention the other two also, but those are not usually very testable, at least for your step, all right? Now, what are those? Let's write it down, those, those lists of disorders, right? Now we're talking about disorder that has to do with one, cardiomyopathies, right? These are, these are, so number one, okay? This is, comes in the heading of here, right here, all right? Now one is called, you have something called dilated, all right? This is called dilated, and you have something called cardiomyopathy, all right? This is the one. Or we can simply write your di dilated or D, cardiomyopathy, like this, all right? This is the one conditions. One comes about the cardiomyopathy. Other one we'll write down here called something called, you know, this is called hyper, hypertrophic, all right? Cardio, cardiomyopathy, all right? Or simply we can write down that H, all right, C, M. Or sometimes this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is also called hypertrophic, okay? But it's obstructive cardiomyopathy like this, all right? Or this is two. And then three one, three is a very important one. It's called restrictive, restrictive cardiomyopathy, all right? Sometimes we also call this as infiltrative, okay? Infiltrative cardiomyopathy, or you can have a restrictive cardiomyopathy like this. Now, these three disorders are the major disorders, major types of cardiomyopathy these three disorders you gotta remember okay now there's other two that i'll mention it to you which are not very like may not major ones but i have to write it down here for you it's called you know this is called array arrhythmo arrhythmogenic okay it is arrhythmogenic but it's a left it's a left and then it's a ventricular ventricular cardiomyopathy or sometimes we also call this as a dysplasia also. And sometimes they abbreviate this as a arrhythmogenic, right? But it's a left, left ventricular cardiomyopathy, or you can write down this as arrhythmogenic left ventricular, actually it's not left, it's actually right, right. It's a right, okay? It's a right ventricular cardiomyopathy or arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, all right? This is the one. And other five is, we say basically it's unclassified, all right? There's unclassified cardiomyopathy, all right? This one's the four, five, uh, fifth group. And usually, you know, there are, there are right down like uh, two conditions. Like one of them is a peripartum. Let's just write down here. That's a, like a peripartum 
uh, cardiomyopathy is there, all right? And other one is something called, you know, this is the other one, all right? This is on class, but it's something called Tokot Subo Cardiomyopathy, all right? Tokot Subo Cardiomyopathy. You can remember this as, you know, Subo, like Subo medicine, right? So you can remember Tokot Subo Cardiomyopathy. And this is, you know, most commonly now, this is also called, you know, broken heart syndrome okay the reason why this is called broken heart syndrome or let's say there are other names it's called so you know this is also called broken broken heart syndrome is there or sometimes they also call this as a stress cardiomyopathy or sometimes they also call this as a apical apical a uh, ballooning uh, cardiomyo Pathy. So these are just different names are given. Okay, when it comes to Takut Subu Karemayapati. Most commonly, contemporarily, like in nowadays, they use this uh, stress karemayapati because usually to get a Takut Subu Karemayapati, there is a there is a overload or like hyperactivity of sympathetic stimulation is there, right? And that basically result into, you know, these the, that result into your myocardium become very very stressed, right? And, and you usually this happens in stressful situations. That is why sometimes this Takasubu cardiomyopathy is also called what? Stress cardiomyopathy, that's what commonly they call, or broken heart syndrome, right? You can call that. But these are the five classified, the five, five group of disorders, right? That comes in the heading of cardiomyopathy. So next time if someone mentions what are the, what are cardiomyopathies? Cardiomyopathies are group, group of disorders, right? group of disorder that result into myocardial dysfunction, structurally and functionally abnormalities you see in the myocardium in the absence of coronary artery disease, congenital heart disease, hypertensions, and valvular heart diseases, right? If this disorder, if this disorder are there, then, then we, could not, we cannot we cannot put this disorder in a cardiomyopathy. Okay, cardiomyopathy is a separate disorders. Make sure you know the definitions. All right, you got to know the definitions. Then after that, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about each one of them. Right, but remember these three: dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or restrictive cardiomyopathy is the three major type of cardiomyopathy you got to know for your board exams. All right, now if you're looking at this, right, this is a you can simply say this is your left ventricle, right? So the left atrium, and this is a left ventricle, correct? And I'm just showing the normal, your normal left atrium, left ventricle. Now, if, if you wanna make it, let's say for example, this dilated cardiomyopathy, right? How does this look like? Usually it will look something like this. If I make this, right? I'm just gonna make it very quickly. It will look something like this. And this is gonna be, what is this? Look. It will look something like this. And this would be my, let's just say, if I quickly make it, look. What really happened is that there are dilations, you see? There are dilations on the left atrium, left ventricle, plus there will also dilations on the right atrium and right ventricle. So there will be all the four chambers needs to be enlarged and dilated in order to be classified as a dilated cardiomyopathy, okay? That's one. Let's just talk about it. If you have a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, usually you know hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is this. That if I quickly make it, right, this is a, all right, this is, okay, I'll make it just a normal, right? So you have a something called, look. Usually, you know, this becomes, this septum becomes, like for example, you know, you see like this, this is, okay, this will be basically normal right here. Okay, hold on. This would be a normal right here, but there is a septum, you know. The septum becomes very, very hypertrophy, like this. So this is a normal, you see, but but basically what happens is this, you know, and this is a, let's just say, and right here, look. This part of this, this is called septum, right? This septum becomes very, very what? hypertrophy and this septum when you have a left ventricle try to eject the blood down right it creates obstruction there right and it's because of this right this is what called something called hypertrophic of obstructive cardiomyopathy right 
This is how it would generally look like. Now we're going to talk about AIDS disorders, but this is sort of like intro, right? And if we talk about the restricted cardiomyopathy, you know, that is basically all right. And if I make this as a heart again, right? Uh, the heart, and what happens is this, that, all right, look, you know? And then you have like ventricle. This is just a left atrium and left ventricle, right? I'm showing it to you. You know, this is a, there's a huge, like basically, you know, restriction is there in the entire heart, like this. So this is basically showing you something called, there's some sort of infiltration is there and that makes it, that makes your heart very, very restrictive, right? There's a lot of infiltration is going on and that because of this, you know, in the restrictive condition, what happens? Your ventricles is fail to relax, right? So it's more of like a dystolic, sorry, it's a diastolic dysfunctions. So whenever we're talking about dilated cardiomyopathy, right? This is a dilated cardiomyopathy, right? This is a, this is a systolic sort of a problem, okay? So there's a systolic disorder or systolic dis dysfunction. But when we talk about, or we can simply say this is a systolic cardiomyopathy that comes in the heading of dilated cardiomyopathy. When we take obstructive, right? This is obstructive, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, and this is a restricted cardiomyopathy, right? These both are what? More of like a diastolic problem, sorry. It's a diastolic dysfunctional, okay? It's a diastolic cardiomyopathy, right? These three disorders, right? Usually, this, this involves also, there is a frequent genetics also involved is there, and that result into your cardiac myocytes become dysfunctional, right? Now, after this sort of like definitions and intro of the cardiomyopathies, next lecture, we're going to talk about the each disorder, mainly focusing on dilated cardiomyopathy, then we'll talk about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, then we'll talk about the restrictive cardiomyopathy. All right, thank you.